Hello and welcome to the new Indian Express Online. I'm Bansi Kalapa. With me is a very well-known personality, Dr. Sudhendra Kulkarni, who is to work very closely with former Prime Minister Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Mr. Kulkarni, first of all, uh, you know when we look at the the kind of a political narrative, the kind of a campaigning that is going on, the campaigning has become extremely vicious, to say the least. You know, <coughs> statements of uh, serpent and vishakanya, and uh, even statements like uh, you know, if a certain party comes to power, there will be communal riots. So very vicious, if you you know look at the political campaigning. So how do you really respond to that? It's very unfortunate mm -hmm. that in a progressive state like Karnataka, we are witnessing an election campaign that is extremely vicious, extremely confrontational, mm -hmm. and uh, has lowered the standard of uh, campaigning mm -hmm. to depths that we have not seen before. Absolutely. One leader calls uh, the Prime Minister of India as a serpent. Mm -hmm. The other leader, one leader from the BJP calls uh, Sonia Gandhi as Vishakanya. Absolutely. Uh, we had not seen this kind of campaign in Karnataka. I'm, I also belong to Karnataka. Mm -hmm. Never Belgaum district. Yeah, from Belgaum district. Yes. Sir. Never before. Ideally, every election campaign mm -hmm. should be an occasion for mass political education. Mm -hmm. It is a responsibility of all political parties mm -hmm. to raise the political consciousness, yes. political understanding, awareness of the people mm -hmm. and reinforce mm -hmm. their understanding and knowledge of the basic principles of democracy. Okay. And in order to do that, Political parties themselves and their leaders mm -hmm. must understand mm -hmm. what democracy is all about. Democracy is not about uh, <clears throat> blaming each other at every single point. Yeah. What they are doing by this mm -hmm. kind of uh, vicious campaigning mm -hmm. is uh, creating a feeling of uh, disappointment, mm -hmm. even despondency mm -hmm. amongst lots of common people mm -hmm. and uh, this must be opposed very strongly. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned the statement by none other than the Home Minister of India mm -hmm. that uh, if the BJP is not voted back to power, there will be communal rights. Absolutely. This is blackmail politics. Mm -hmm. What, you know, does he, does he think mm -hmm. that uh, when the BJP was not in power and which was for the longest period after independence, mm -hmm. uh, it is the Congress that has ruled uh, Karnataka. Mm -hmm. Was it all a period of communal riots? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Commun of course, communal riots are extremely unfortunate and they have happened in the, in the reign of uh, this government and that government. They are localized. Mm -hmm. The people of <coughs> Karnataka mm -hmm. are by and large peace loving. Absolutely. They don't like communal tension, mm -hmm. they don't like violence in the name of religion. Mm -hmm. There has been a long tradition of co-living, peaceful living. Absolutely. The culture of Karnataka mm -hmm. is represented mm -hmm. by great personalities mm -hmm. like Sarvadnya, mm -hmm. Basavanna, Shishunal Sharif, Absolutely. the Dasa Poets. Yeah, that's a tradition. And mm -hmm. in modern times, by people like Kuvempu. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a tradition. Mm -hmm. It's a tradition that has always hailed mm -hmm. the principle mm -hmm. of uh, peaceful coexistence among people of different castes, subcastes, and religious identities. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. today, for the sake of gaining power or consolidating power, mm -hmm. political parties, and here I especially would like to blame. Mm -hmm the BJP mm -hmm. for fomenting communal violence and polarizing society just for getting votes and coming back to power mm -hmm. because they have no real positive message to give mm -hmm. on the basis of their performance in governance. Okay. Now you have been in <coughs> Bharti Janta Party for about 16 years yes. and you moved out of the Bharti Janta Party so uh, you know 
Now you belong to Athani. You belong to Belgaum district. Now Athani has a leader, uh, you know, Mr. Saudi, who uh, moved out of the Bharatiya Janata Party similarly. So, uh, you know, is is there at some point would you come back to the Bharatiya Janata Party? No. You know, the Bharatiya Janata Party has changed beyond recognition mm -hmm. since Narendra Modi and Amit Shah mm -hmm. have uh, come to the helm of this party. Mm -hmm. This has no resemblance mm -hmm. with uh, the party that I served mm -hmm. for 16 long years mm -hmm. under the leadership of Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Lal Krishna Advani ji, mm -hmm. whom I regard. Mm -hmm. Even though I am not in the party anymore, mm -hmm. I have the greatest respect for both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they were leaders who were truly inclusive, mm -hmm. who believed in democratic traditions, mm -hmm. who fought for democracy. So just to give an example, mm -hmm. we are having this conversation in Bangalore Absolutely. and it is in the central jail of Bangalore mm -hmm. that uh, both Vajpayee and Advani ji were imprisoned when emergency was declared okay. on 25th June 1975 mm -hmm. and Advaniji actually spent almost the entire part of the emergency of 19 months mm -hmm. in Bangalore in jail. Bangalore. So they suffered imprisonment mm -hmm. but they also in all different ways politically in terms of uh, ideas mm -hmm. they fought against the emergency against authoritarianism mm -hmm. and they defeated mm -hmm. dictatorship mm -hmm. and when the people themselves mm -hmm. ousted Indira Gandhi and the Congress at that time, mm -hmm. it was Vajpayee and Advani ji who were at the forefront mm -hmm. of restoring democracy, okay. of, of uh, moving back mm -hmm. all the anti-democratic amendments mm -hmm. to the constitution mm -hmm. that were brought about during the emergency. So the point I am making is, mm -hmm. Vajpayeeji, Advaniji, they were Democrats to the core Absolutely. and they deeply believed in the diversity of India, mm -hmm. social diversity, religious diversity, cultural diversity mm -hmm. and they also had respect for opposition parties. I have been witness having served in the Prime Minister's office mm -hmm. how Vajpayeeji as Prime Minister took not only 24 parties in the National Democratic Party alliance along. Mm -hmm. There were big parties, there were small parties, but mm -hmm. he cared for all of them. He treated all of them with respect. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, mm -hmm. he also took the con opposition into confidence and therefore the opposition respected him as the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. Today, all that faith, trust, confidence has broken down. Mm -hmm. Today, the, the center state relations are at an all time low. Mm -hmm. There is no uh, meaningful dialogue between the ruling party and the opposition. Absolutely. There is no dialogue in the par in parliament. Mm -hmm. So where is democracy headed? Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why I have left mm -hmm. the Bharati Janata Party. Mm -hmm. Now coming to the other part of your question, mm -hmm. where you mentioned about the fact that I am from Athani, mm -hmm. where uh, one Sodom. local leader, uh, he is both a local leader and also a prominent leader of uh, the BJP mm -hmm. until recently, mm -hmm. who even became the Deputy Chief Minister, mm -hmm. Lakshman Saudi, mm -hmm. ha who has switched from the BJP to the Congress. Yes. Now, it just goes to show, mm -hmm. I mean, he, and he is not the only one, mm -hmm. there is also Jagdish Shetta, yes. another prominent uh, BJP, BJP leader, leader mm -hmm. who happened to be the Chief Minister, former mm -hmm. Chief Minister of Karnataka. Mm -hmm. He has also left the BJP and join the Congress. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show that in this election, mm -hmm. the BJP seems to have suffered some setbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to wait and see what the outcome of all these things uh, is going to be mm -hmm. on the day of counting May 13. Mm -hmm. But uh, these are definitely setbacks for the BJP. And I'm, I would like to say mm -hmm. that in in other parts of India too, mm -hmm. there are very prominent leaders of the BJP who served the BJP for long years with dedication and commitment mm -hmm. like Yeshwan Sinha, Arun Shauri, they also have, have left the party. Mm -hmm. 
and they have become strong critics of the BJP now. Absolutely. So, the the one message mm -hmm. that this conveys mm -hmm. to all the thinking people mm -hmm. within the BJP now mm -hmm. is that they should introspect. Mm -hmm. They should do honest introspection on where their party is headed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Also, uh, you know, BJP, uh, you mentioned about Jagdish Shetar, another senior leader. When he came out, you know, there was so much of uh, anger, frustration, uh, even some amount of bitterness that he had been betrayed by the Bharatiya Janata Party, whom he had served so faithfully for about four decades. There was no reason to leave him out, no taint, uh, no issue of age because he is well within the 75 years because, you know, uh, Tiparadi is much older, yet he was accommodated. Somana is older. He was accommodated. He is only 68. So, age is not the criteria, but he was not accommodated and they spoke of a conspiracy. So, would you like to comment about that? See, what it goes to show mm -hmm. is that even the so-called principles mm -hmm. or criteria that they have themselves set, mm -hmm. for example, the criterion of age, mm -hmm. it is not uh, implemented across the board uniformly. Mm -hmm. Which means mm -hmm. that it has no real sanctity. Mm -hmm. Some are removed or denied tickets mm -hmm. by citing the, uh, the the factor of age, mm -hmm. whereas those who are even older than Jagdish Shatta yeah. are given tickets. For example, Yadurappa mm -hmm. first was asked to step down Absolutely. as chief minister, Absolutely. but he happens to be. Uh, a member of the highest decision making party body in the party that's a parliamentary, parliamentary board, board yeah. hmm? now what kind of uh, what kind of uh, decision making is this Absolutely. and this is why there are strong suspicions voiced by people within the bjp yeah. and the ecosystem of its supporters mm -hmm. that uh, denying ticket to someone like jagdish shetta mm -hmm is for other reasons mm -hmm. than what has been stated. Mm -hmm. could, could the other reasons be a kind of a conspiracy hatched by B.L. Santosh and Prahlad Joshi that if they deny Shetter the ticket, someone of their choice could become Chief Minister, even Joshi whose name has been doing the rounds? You see, uh, I have no real internal knowledge mm -hmm. of uh, how these decisions have been taken and therefore I would not like to comment mm -hmm. but what you have stated mm -hmm. is actually the general talk Absolutely. in Karnataka mm -hmm. that uh, uh, there is factionalism within the BJP mm -hmm. which has led to denial of ticket to someone like uh, uh, Jagdish Jagdish Shetter, even Lakshman Saudi. Absolutely. At one point of time mm -hmm. the BJP prided itself mm -hmm. in calling that the BJP is a party with a difference. Absolutely. Uh, what, do, what does it mean? That we are not a party that has internal uh, power struggles, mm -hmm. squabbles. Mm -hmm. We are not a party that is corrupt, that tolerates corruption. Mm -hmm. But what do we see mm -hmm. about the BJP in Karnataka? Mm -hmm. You know, it is, it is common knowledge mm -hmm. that uh, the BJP government was uh, among the worst mm -hmm. in terms of corruption. Mm -hmm. In the history of in the history of Karnataka, even in the history of India, mm -hmm. it came to be known as 40% corruption, mm -hmm. and this was not an allegation mm -hmm. leveled by the Congress or others. Mm -hmm. People who suffered this kind of corruption themselves wrote mm -hmm. to the highest authorities in India. Mm -hmm. This is this is what is happening in 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 Karnataka. So where is the party with a difference? Absolutely. Also, uh, BJP has launched yet another high-pitched campaign. And if you look at the campaign by the Congress and the Bharatiya Janata Party, Congress campaign really no match, you know, <coughs> by the sheer potency of the campaign. Would you like to comment about the campaign? Because when Modi goes on his road shows, you have that, you know, historical chant, uh, you know, by the crowds following him, supporting him. You know, this high-pitched campaign, what is its core message? Mm -hmm. The core message of... Uh, the, the high decibel campaign by the BJP is that 
Karnataka needs a double engine sarkar, mm -hmm. double engine government. Mm -hmm. That is, there should be a, a government of the party at the centre mm -hmm. and the same party should continue to govern mm -hmm. in Karnataka, double engine. Absolutely. Now, this raises very serious questions. Mm -hmm. First of all, it is anti-constitution, mm -hmm. it is anti-democracy. India is a multi-party democracy. Mm -hmm. So, when you say there should be a double engine sarkar, mm -hmm. In Karnataka, in Uttar Pradesh, in Bihar, in Maharashtra, in every single state in India, what you are saying in effect mm -hmm. is that India should be not just Congress Mukt, mm -hmm. but in India should be opposition Mukt. Mm -hmm. Which means mm -hmm. one nation, one party, mm -hmm. one leader mm -hmm. and one ideology. This goes completely against the grain of the constitution and democracy. Mm -hmm. This is one aspect of the double engine sarkar mm -hmm. um, appeal. Mm -hmm. But there is another aspect. Mm -hmm. See, already there was a double engine sarkar. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No? For the past the close to four yes, years. There was, uh, there is BJP government at the center since 2014 yes. and a BJP government in Karnataka. Absolutely. What happened? Mm -hmm. Why did the the double engine sarkar fail to curb price rise? Today price rise is at the highest and you ask anybody in Karnataka or even people beyond Karnataka, mm -hmm. what is the one single most problem that affects common people? Mm -hmm. It is price rise. Absolutely. We have none other than the Prime Minister himself mm -hmm. on record before uh, 2014 mm -hmm. asking why is there is so much price rise during Manmohan Singh's government. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He said why is the, the rupee devaluing mm -hmm. and in 2014 the value of rupee was against dollar was some, somewhere around 56. Yes. Today it has crossed 80. Does he have an answer? When the BJP was in the opposition, mm -hmm. they protested everywhere mm -hmm. against the price of cylinder Absolutely. which had reached 400 per cylinder mm -hmm. and we have seen the visuals of ministers sitting on dharna mm -hmm. with actual cylinders. Mm -hmm. Today it is three times higher. Almost three times higher. Do they have an answer? Absolutely. So has double engine sarkar meant mm -hmm. cheaper gas, mm -hmm. cheaper transport, yes. cheaper house rent, cheaper medical care, mm -hmm. cheaper school fees. So how has, how has it benefited the common people? Correct. Unemployment. Mm -hmm. Has double engine sarkar been able to reduce unemployment? Mm -hmm. But I would like to mention one more very, very important point about this high pitched mm -hmm. uh, campaign by the BJP that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Double engine sarkar is actually what they are proposing and presenting to the people of in Karnataka is that there should not only be a double engine sarkar but it should be it will be a double engine sarkar with a single driver okay. hmm? meaning that the driver of the engine at the center is prime minister modi mm -hmm. and the driver of the government in bangalore karnataka is also narendra modi hmm? So, and this is not someone else's interpretation. Mm -hmm. Amit Shah, mm -hmm. the Home Minister, mm -hmm. in a rally in Karnataka says mm -hmm. that people of Karnataka should hand over the future of Karnataka to the hands of Narendra Modi. Mm -hmm. He is not saying that Basavaraj Bommai, mm -hmm. he is our chief ministerial candidate or someone else is. So, please trust our leader mm -hmm. and they will take India, they will take Karnataka on the path of uh, continued development. He's not saying that. Mm -hmm. He's saying hand over the future of Karnataka to Narendra Modi. Narendra, yes. Similarly, the party national president mm -hmm. JP Nadda mm -hmm. again in a rally in Karnataka says that if you do not vote the BJP to power in, in Karnataka, you will be deprived of the Ashirwad of Narendra Modi, Absolutely. the blessings of Narendra Modi. Absolutely. I mean, it is it is so uh, insulting mm. to the self-respecting people of Karnataka. Absolutely. Should they be begging for the blessings and ashirwad of Narendra Modi? Absolutely. Is it democracy? So, this is why I said, 
what they are actually telling the people is not just double engine sarkar but it's a double engine sarkar with a single driver and that's why they are in every speech they are saying they are they are seeking votes in the name of narendra modi absolutely not by telling that what we have done for karnataka mm -hmm. that is not at all in their campaign mm -hmm. also you yourself <laughs> you spoke about you know atal bihari vajpayee and mr adwani being in prison but you yourself were in prison during the emergency and uh, you have said that there is an undeclared emergency now you have said it on many occasions can you substantiate that point yeah first of all i would like to put this on record mm -hmm. that i was not imprisoned during the emergency mm -hmm. even though i protested mm -hmm. as a student activist against mm -hmm. the emergency mm -hmm. but that apart mm -hmm. it is well known that tens of thousands mm -hmm. of young activists and even not so young people were imprisoned during the emergency mm -hmm. the likes of jay prakash narayan mm -hmm. murarji desai mm -hmm. george fernandez atal bihari vajpayee mm -hmm. uh, even ramkrishna hegde and deve gowda from yes, uh, yes. from karnataka yes. so uh, the emergency period mm -hmm. from 1975 to 1977 which was imposed by the congress mm -hmm. was the darkest period mm -hmm. in the history of democracy in india correct and the people of india showed mm -hmm. that they do not like dictatorship Absolutely. and they voted even a strong leader a tall leader like indira gandhi was defeated Absolutely. in 1977 mm -hmm. now there is no declared emergency mm -hmm. but there is undeclared emergency of sorts mm -hmm. i am not saying that things are as bad mm -hmm. as during the emergency no we still have many freedoms Absolutely. but these freedoms are shrinking mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. the freedom of thought mm -hmm. freedom of expression mm -hmm. which is enshrined in the constitution of india mm -hmm. are under tremendous threat and we are seeing it in the media mm -hmm. most of the mainstream media is uh, is not really exercising its independence the media irrespective of which party is in power mm -hmm. they should speak truth to power mm -hmm. wherever the government is doing right of mm -hmm. course they should show that this is right mm -hmm. but where the government is wrong mm -hmm. they should have the fearless approach of criticizing the government do you see that with some exceptions mm -hmm. apart mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. of the media today mm -hmm. is under control mm -hmm. similarly other institutions of governance mm -hmm. are completely under the control of the government and are being misused mm -hmm. ed cbi income tax absolutely hmm? they are being selectively used mm -hmm. against the opposition mm -hmm. as if there is no corruption within the bjp mm -hmm. even the judiciary is sought to be controlled mm -hmm. which happened during the emergency absolutely so this is why i am saying that there is a kind of a undeclared emergency and if the bjp comes back to power with similar majority in 2024 mm -hmm. things will get worse okay now uh, they call him vishwaguru you have worked with narendra modi personally yes. and you know him uh, you know personally uh, you you have worked with him uh, you know would you like to say something about about his working about his see persona there are many positive aspects of narendra modi mm -hmm. which i have no hesitation in acknowledging mm -hmm. because i have known him very closely when i was in the bjp mm -hmm. uh, he is extremely hard working mm -hmm. he is he has single minded focus mm -hmm. on what he wants to achieve mm -hmm. which is a very good quality in a leader okay similarly he is very innovative in whatever he tries to do mm -hmm. he comes up with new ideas mm -hmm. on how to communicate mm -hmm. how to appeal to the minds and hearts of the people correct these are good qualities mm -hmm. in narendra modi but we have seen as i mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that uh, his commitment to democracy mm -hmm. either with inside the bjp or in the country at large mm -hmm. has been found to be wanting mm -hmm. hmm? and uh, you you know vishwaguru mm -hmm. the today the bjp is uh, making a, a very high pitched uh, campaign mm -hmm. that uh, india is becoming vishwaguru mm -hmm. leader for the world mm -hmm. 
not just leader but teacher for the world absolutely of course india mm. being an old civilization a rich civilization mm-hmm. a civilization with enormous civilizational wisdom mm-hmm. has a lot to offer to the world True. this is the country that has produced great personalities mm-hmm. since time immemorial mm-hmm. like the rishis of the vedic period mm-hmm. the great uh, uh, the great teachers of mankind mm-hmm. that we see in ramayana and mahabharata mm-hmm. rama and krishna mm-hmm. gautam buddha mm-hmm. mahavira mm-hmm. in the in the middle age we have seen bhakti poets including those from karnataka mm-hmm. sarvajna mm-hmm. great social reformers like basavanna mm-hmm. who is a jagat guru mm-hmm. he is truly a jagat guru mm-hmm. people like guru nanak mm-hmm. kabir mm-hmm. right up to swami vivekananda absolutely and mahatma gandhi mm-hmm. these are all in a true sense each one of them individually is a vishwa guru mm-hmm. individually because they had a message and that message is still alive and relevant which is universal and also timeless true but can we say that india today is a vishwa guru i mean it's or is modi the vishwa guru you know let's be very mm-hmm. honest mm-hmm. Huh? you know we are all patriotic mm-hmm. you are patriotic i am patriotic absolutely. everyone is patriotic we mm-hmm. all love our country mm-hmm. but can we in all honesty say mm-hmm. that today india is vishwa guru that the rest of the world has accepted india as a vishwa guru mm-hmm. with so many problems mm-hmm. power problem of poverty mm-hmm. problem of extreme inequality in india mm-hmm. where there are a few people who have become billionaire some of the richest in the world mm-hmm. whereas there's a huge majority that is devi- you know deprived even of the basic necessities yeah. of life hmm? can we call ourselves a vishwa guru mm-hmm. look at polarization mm-hmm. in the name of uh, hindu muslim yeah, yeah. and which is being used for politics Absolutely. for political gains the kind of mistake that pakistan committed mm-hmm. after partition we are repeating the same mistakes Correct. they uh, created a nation mm-hmm. on a very poisonous ideology or or uh, plank mm-hmm. called two nation theory okay. that hindus are a separate nation muslims are a separate nation and after partition and after creation of pakistan they called themselves islamic republic mm-hmm. they islamized themselves mm-hmm. and not only did they drive out huge numbers of minorities hindu sikhs and others but they reduced whatever number that still remained mm-hmm. to second class citizens do we want to imitate pakistan and similar communalization of india mm-hmm. india was secular and india is proud to be secular Absolutely. because hinduism the basic tenet and identity of hinduism is secular what is it, what is it secular mm-hmm. respect for all faiths sarva dharma sambhav sarva pant samabhav mm-hmm. this is what hinduism believes mm-hmm. and this is why this is an aspect of vishwa guru mm-hmm. secularism mm-hmm. like some sarva pant samabhav mm-hmm. is a is a quality of being vishwa guru and we want to abandon that mm-hmm. you know what a you know what a tragedy mm-hmm. we want to become vishwa guru but we want to imitate pakistan mm-hmm. so that's why let us you know let us understand the best traditions of hinduism the best traditions of islam the best traditions of christianity sikhism buddhism jainism zoroastrianism and synthesize all of them then india will become vishwa guru let's truly create a vibrant genuine democracy let's create an india where there is no inequality equal opportunities for all where there are no uh, atrocities and crimes against women hmm? that is being vishwa guru and that is only possible when we all work together the bjp congress janata dal you know all of in 
we should limit our competition mm. within certain limits mm. we should not cross the lakshman rekha mm. uh, because democracy is not only about contest mm. democracy is also about cooperation, cooperation. Mm. and therefore we should create new a new era when all political parties cooperate more and more for the good of the nation and this i would like to see beginning in karnataka and which is why i don't belong to any party mm -hmm. i have served for many years in the bjp i was a communist earlier okay. today for there are many things about the congress which i support mm -hmm. like the bharat jodo yatra okay. but today i am trying in my own very small ways mm -hmm. to build bridges mm -hmm. between the congress bjp mm -hmm. and all of the parties mm -hmm. wherever there are national interest involved absolutely uh, also one very disturbing thing is that many parties have accommodated criminals uh, you know national parties you know parties have just in spite of 30 40 cases against criminals they have just accommodated them would you like to comment absolutely you know this is a, a very serious issue mm -hmm. and yet again you know we cannot be condoning criminalization and criminals in politics mm -hmm. including criminals in the ruling party and yet say that you know we are becoming a vishwaguru absolutely take the example the you know, example of today mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. there is a protest going on at jantar mantar in new delhi mm -hmm. some wrestlers mm -hmm. both male and female have been protesting against an individual who happens to be the chief of the wrestle, wrestling association absolutely and they have made very serious charges of sexual exploitation okay. whether the charges are true false is a different matter that belongs to the area of investigation mm -hmm. but whenever people who have won medals even at the olympics publicly make certain allegations the government must immediately investigate absolutely hmm? you talked about criminalization here is a person who is in public public life he may be innocent i am not i am not here to judge yeah 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 but when days after days some people are protesting the first thing the government should do is investigate absolutely that because that will build confidence mm -hmm. that the government does not tolerate criminalization mm -hmm. today in karnataka itself mm -hmm. there are people with very shady backgrounds who have one of them has 40 cases who's yeah. contesting in uh, chincholi so therefore uh, this is very serious and again you know every party to a lesser or Ch chitapur uh, sorry chitapur yes yeah. <laughs> to a lesser or ex greater extent mm -hmm. has been guilty of this mm -hmm. so therefore therefore i'm saying that there should be some areas of political consensus mm -hmm. where there should be no compromise no compromise on criminalization okay criminal criminals must be completely kept out of politics my last question to you now the voter goes to vote in the next few days in karnataka when he goes to vote what is the picture he needs to carry in his mind as he casts his vote in the ballot box it's a very good question and i would like to say that uh, the people of karnataka must vote to ensure that the mistakes of the past are not repeated what do i mean by this mm -hmm. that there should not be a hung assembly mm -hmm. that gives an opportunity for operation kamal to be repeated okay because we have seen in the past mm -hmm. how a minority was manufactured and transformed into a majority, majority yes. by bribing elected representatives mm -hmm. by creating divisions and defections yes. this is complete subversion mm -hmm. of people's mandate true in order to prevent this mm -hmm. operation kamal or any such variety mm -hmm. we have seen what happened in neighboring maharashtra absolutely you know a ruling coalition and in goa and in goa and in madhya pradesh. pradesh you know what you know the, uh, is this can we do all this and still say you know we are becoming vishwaguru we are becoming a, we are becoming a, becoming a laughing stock absolutely huh? so therefore 
as far as people of Karnataka are concerned, they must exercise their vote in order to bring about change. Because this government has earned a you know, very strong reputation of anti-incumbency. It has failed to deliver on, on its promises. So therefore, you know, in Kannada, uh, if I may just yeah, use please, one please, word, yes. uh, Roti Madhuaga, Roti Anna, Tiru Tiru Bekaat Sure. Ill Dadre Ad Roti Sudh Ke Tadre. Burnt Yes. Hage, you know, there should be change. There huh? should be. So change. when there is change, there is at least Badala Vani Adre Sudhara Nige Vandu Vandu Hadi Hut Tadre. And one do badalavane agbe. Adre badalavane jotheli. In in addition to change, there must be a very strong, decisive mandate to a party that can provide stable government, so that there is no operation kamal. Okay. So this is my appeal to the people of Karnataka. Okay. Thank you. There it is, Mr. Sudhendra Kulkarni, a man who closely worked with the legendary Prime Minister, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, in the Prime Minister's office who uh, quit the Bharatiya Janata Party after, after serving the party for about 16 years, saying there must be change in Karnataka. With camera person Nagaraj Kadekal, this is Bansi for the New Indian Express Online.